Hey guys, I just wanted to start this off and let you know that I'm going to have Caroline's links to her social media, her blog, her channel, all on the screen here, um, and also linked down below. If you guys don't follow Caroline, you really should, um, especially if you like skincare. Her blog is an infinite resource for um, all things skin, and she's hilarious, so it's always a good read, and her YouTube is hilarious as well, so I will have that all linked below. I am sitting next to a window and I noticed when I got this video, I was like, I look exceptionally shiny. I am wearing a cushion foundation. I promise you it's not sweat. Um, if that offends you, I, I have to say your life must be pretty good because uh, that's, that's not something that you should really be offended by. But uh, I do look overly extra dewy in this video. Um, but oh well, just letting you know. Uh, hope you guys enjoy the video and make sure to check out Caroline's for part two. Hi everyone, welcome, welcome back, back to my, my channel. channel. My channel. My channel, actually. Well, no. I'm just gonna get my tea. Look who I'm here with. Hi! I like to think that I, I dreamt this into fruition. I think you did. Because I remember years ago I said, I in my head I think Caroline and I are best friends and we're gonna have tea in London. I and remember now, you yeah. saying that, except we're having tea in LA. Yeah, and I think it's like two years, three years, two or three years, I don't know. It's a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Hi. Hi. We're going to split this video, basically. We're going to just film one long Q&A and then split it in half. Yeah. I'm good at long video. <laughs> yeah. We, we, neither of us do three minute videos. You can't. You can't mm -mm. get a lot of information in that mm -mm. amount of time. I wish, sometimes I wish I could be like, the product is great. Buy this. Goodbye. <laughs> That's Not my style. Mic drop. I know. No. It would be easy though. So we have behind the camera, <laughs> Jordan Samuel, who joins us to ask the questions. Yeah. <laughs> Today on The Price is Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we asked on our Instagram and Twitter for questions from the Q&A and there's hundreds of them. Yeah. Which is why I make tea. <laughs> yep. So, should we just go? Yep. Shoot. Shall we? Oh yep. God. I and we don't know by the way. Yeah. Why are foaming cleansers bad and how much foaming is too much? I think foaming cleansers are stripping. They are. They typically have different surfactants in there that are going to strip all the natural oils from your skin. I think a small amount of foam, like if you're kind of emulsifying it into your skin could be okay, but I don't like the ones that come out in foam and you put them on your skin. I'm not a fan of foaming. Yeah. Um, they're, they're too drying. Even the ones, you, you might find the odd one, but even the ones that don't use SLS or they use variants of a surfactant, it's still just too much for me personally. Um, sodium lauryl sulfate for me is just a horrible ingredient. I can't use it in shampoo either, so why would I use it on my face? I've even stopped using it in toothpaste at this point. I remember you said that, mm. big difference. Too, too drying, um, and the, I think it gets people, especially in the US, it gets them addicted to that. They feel clean and tight. Tight, yeah. Tight's not good, your no. skin's not supposed to feel tight. Your butt should feel tight, <laughs> not your face. Yeah. And it gets those little micro cracks and then they then they put Ooh. moisturizer over top and then you've sealed in bacteria in your face. Which yeah, it's good. just not not for me. Mm -mm. Next question. Uh, this person would love to hear about your current skincare regimens and or your current favorite products, maybe by newer brands. Have you switched up a lot lately? Always. I feel, yeah, I feel like every time you have a completely different routine. Um, my current favorite products, I... Um, I, I've kind of moved almost exclusively to indie brands. I use, I use things like, I'll still use the odd thing from Clinique and the odd thing from Clarins, but in general, it's brands like the people who we had dinner with last night, like the Jordans, the Joshes, the Mays, the Januaries, indie brands where I know they're obsessed with the ingredients and how ethically sourced they are and, and it comes from passion and... So, and I do mix it up with a little bit of a chemical. Yeah. I mean, you know, everything's a chemical, that can be another question, but uh, what I would call a cosmeceutical range, even though I hate that term as well, but you know, a more science-led range. So like, you know, a Neostrata or that, uh, SkinCeuticals. But uh, yeah, I generally mix it up all the time. I mean, I obviously have like lifelong favorites, mm -hmm. but I mix everything up. Yeah, I, I have a pretty standard routine. Like I'll introduce new products one at a time just so I know what's causing problems for me because um, my skin can be reactive to certain things, but my steps are always the same. Like yeah. my first cleanse, my second cleanse, an acid tone, 
my moisturizer spritz, spritz, spritz. yeah all of those things are the same so i'm um, basically when i'm testing products i i do switch out a decent amount but i do them one product at a time so i know actually some stuff i've been loving i told you about last night is that um hada labo it's a japanese hyaluronic mm -hmm. serum it's like 11 dollars, and it has three different molecular weights in there so it's penetrating different levels and it's awesome yeah i freaking love it i'm shocked that I found something so affordable that has knocked every other hyaluronic acid I've tried out of the water. I'm see if just you can get it in the UK. Yeah, I get it on that yesstyle.com and they ship internationally. I get it from Hong Kong in four days, DHL. Yeah, I'll yeah. be taking that tip. Yeah, it's awesome. So I've been trying a, a couple more, you guys have asked a lot for Japanese and Korean skincare brands and that those Japanese, those hydrators are amazing. Yeah, I kind of, I veer more towards Japanese than Korean brands because that part of me pushes against trends I can't help yeah. myself. Like if people are like, oh, what's new? What's the best in K beauty? And I'm like, oh, it's too trendy. And I know that sounds weird, you know, but also I don't live in Korea and I know that sounds weird, but that skin, that skincare is made for a completely different weather, mm -hmm. yeah. especially for the UK. So, but having said that, the new beauty pie Japanese range is lovely. Mm. And I've used the cleanser, the serum, the cream, and there was one more, but that's lovely so far. Yeah, I like J it. That's ja like, Japan Fusion, I think it's yeah, called. Yeah, Japanese skincare brands, they have amazing sunscreens and yeah. great drugstore skincare. Like yeah. super clean, which I'm shocked yeah. at good, pr good prices. What's your top two fave trainers? Okay, so this is Laura. And she means sneakers. Oh, I was like, like personal trainer? I don't work out. <laughs> no, neither of us work out. That would be like, uh, David Kirsch? No. Um, Adidas. I only went, or Adidas. Do you say Adidas in Adidas. the US? Uh, we say Adidas. I was like, what is that? That sounds mm. exotic. <laughs> yes, well, we're English, so. Yes. I, like um, I like Stan Smith's. I like that I'm answering the question with all seriousness. Yeah. Anything Adidas, to be honest. Yeah, I don't, I don't you really wear sneakers. No. I don't never see you in them. Mm -mm. I have some Nikes and some Adidas, but I, I pretty much am a flip flop wearer. I don't yeah, know why. You live I in love, the heat. Yeah. Well, San Francisco isn't that, that warm, but I lived nine years in Arizona and it was so hot that I just wore flip flops all the time. So now I just love them. I, I have super flops. high arches on my feet. Yeah. So I like the memory foam ones that like <laughs> foamed my feet. I'm like, yep, love them. I'm barefoot. I like going barefoot. Yeah. Yeah. Which is it's just a random question in the middle of there. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> I know. I was like, trainers. Is that something I should know? What Sneakers is, oh is what God. she means. How to prevent skincare from pilling under makeup would be extremely helpful. Oh, do you want to take this one? Yeah. You have to layer them properly. It has to go from thinnest consistency to thickest consistency. And you have to be mindful that your bases play well. So if you're trying to put on a really heavy silicone moisturizer or primer Serum or anything primer. yeah and then you're putting like a water-based foundation on top you're gonna have issues because those two aren't gonna mix well they so, just don't play well yeah. it's, it's silicone is yeah. the main reason mm -hmm. why so if you have a uh, a silicone serum, even on my, and that's not to say, I don't have an issue with silicone Me personally, yeah. but it, when you use it in every single layer and there's different, again, weights of silicone, mm -hmm. you'll get an issue and you'll get that horrible where it just all, you feel like yeah. I have to go and wash my face. No, I've had a couple times where I'm going like this, oh. where it almost looks like little dirt balls, but no. yeah. And you have to be mindful of how you're putting your makeup on too. So mm. if you're like taking, a, using a buffing brush over top, it's naturally gonna start pilling up and balling up. So press in, press in. <laughs> What are your favorite eye creams? Oh, okay. So I've just bought a Belief one from Sephora, which was lovely. Showed you that one yesterday. Yeah. Cause you got me into the Belief cream and then I found the eye cream. I was like, did you get the yes. eye cream? <laughs> and then we are both playing, cause I know we can speak on your behalf. We yeah. are both playing with a new eye cream that I think is maybe the best eye cream I've ever used. Yeah, and I don't like eye creams, but I really do like this one. And I don't know when it's out, but we, I know we can't say anything about it. And I hate to do that. I'm, I hate being that kind yeah. of wanker who's like, oh, we can't talk about it. <laughs> but we can't talk about it. Yeah. Soon. 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 I, th I think, actually, I think Imminently? it's like mid-March. Mid Mid-March. It's amazing. Yeah, it's nice. I even like it, and I don't really like eye creams. Yeah. Would you put a skincare regimen together for traveling, airplane skincare? Yes, I've got a blog post coming up about mine, actually. Less is more. I don't think you need to go crazy. Um, I don't travel in makeup. That would be my main tip. So mm -hmm. unless you're seeing off your boyfriend at the gate and you're not too long into a relationship and you want to wear makeup, that's fine. But then go straight to the bathroom once you've gone through security and wash it all off. Mm -hmm. Don't fly in makeup. Um, really light hydration, moisturizer. 
I used Josh Rosebrook's Hydrating Accelerator on the plane and I can't remember what moisturiser I put but anyway it's in my bag and I'll be showing you but literally just spritz and a light moisturiser throughout the flight. I don't go crazy. I did bring, I always bring like a mask or something to put on and I never bother because I'm watching a film and I don't want to get on the headphones and... Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, when I went took that 24 and a half hour trip to Bali, I was petrified because I do get really dry skin, especially in recycled air like that, where I'll get blemishes too and I had a wedding to go to, so I was like, please don't. So I brought just um, like a spray mist and a moisturizer and a lip balm with me and my carry on. And that's what I'll do. And if I do like most of the time I'll wear like a BB cream or like Mac face and body, like a light water based foundation, something that's not too heavy. And I'll just fill in my eyebrows. Like I typically don't wear eyelashes, contour, all of that stuff. Cause I also like to sleep on the plane. Yeah, so it's like if you're rubbing yeah. your face. Yeah. And then you look crazy. You get up and half your makeup's missing on one side of your face. So yeah, I mean, I'm flying out tomorrow night, so I'll have a face full of makeup on, but I will wash my face in the toilet in yeah. the airport before I get on the plane. Yeah, yeah. If you have super dry skin, I would just say wear a nice moisturizer on your face. Make sure you have a mist or something and chapstick because that recycled oh. air gets so dry, especially mm, for chapstick. like international flights. Chapstick, eye cream. Yeah. I like eye cream on a flight, mm -hmm. but not necessarily, not necessarily, you know, really expensive. Just, you know, maybe that's the sort of the four lip balm, moisturizer, spritz, and an eye. Yeah. I, don't, I, I normally don't do the eye creams, but mm. I do a lot of moisturizers. You will now, you like yeah. this one. Yeah, I do like that one. Current favorite primer and foundation combination. I have that one primer I was telling you about that I feel like I shouldn't like it because there's so much alcohol in it, but I do. Mm -hmm. But it's an aerosol. It's that Origins, it's the new one, and that little, I don't even know the name of it perfecting skin or something. I rubbed it on the back of your hand. There is, there's a lot of oils in there. Mm -hmm. A lot of, a decent amount of essential oils too. So it's probably not gonna be best for sensitive skin. Or if you have super dry skin, probably not gonna be best for you. But it has like that cooling effect. Yeah. And I really like that. And then the favorite foundation, I've been wearing a ton of the Kep foundations. I haven't tried any of the Kep okay. foundations. Okay, I'm gonna send you some. No, don't. No, 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 because I'll, I'll talk to Muse okay. and have them send you some. Oh, I like that. Yeah. You just have what, to tell me what your what hourglass. Kind of, what kind of So they coverage? have medium to full, and then they have their Hydro foundation that's like the MAC face and body, same consistency, mm -hmm. except it's more pigmented. And a little goes a long way. So it looks, she, her whole family works in uh, film. Right. So everything she tests in HD on camera before she makes a oh. product. So it reads beautifully. She doesn't put like actives in any of it. So it shouldn't irritate anybody's skin at all. It's very like clean ingredients. She makes um, a wax based con or not concealer foundation. And then she also makes the hydro and then mm -hmm. she makes an alcohol based one used on movie sets that is waterproof. So wow. she airbrushes tattoos out. Like completely oh, wow. all gone. And then she goes through and puts little freckles on the arm so it doesn't look like a creepy mannequin she's hand. She's so cool. Yeah, she's awesome. She's always out right. I use I use Hourglass Illusion Foundation. You I love have done it. That. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's I don't know if I would have picked it up had I not uh, had a friend recommend it to me, but it's amazing and I've used it ever since I got my hands on it. And I just changed shades for the summer. And then I used to use Armani's primer, the white one. Um, but then last week, Amanda from, uh, my girlfriend Amanda introduced me to the Marc Jacobs Coconut Primer. Yeah, you put that on my hand. In yesterday. Sephora, and my skin feels like a soft, bouncy trampoline with it, and it's <laughs> amazing, and it works really well with the hourglass. Mm hmm I have to try that one. But I tend to be much more loyal to primers and foundation than I am skincare. Yeah. Because cool. I just, I'm not a big, huge makeup addict, so I kind of think, oh, this feels nice, and I'll use it for 10, 10 months or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I like the hyaluronic skin tint. It's moisturizing, mm. and it feels nice. And there's a good amount of coverage a in it. A good coverage. Like, yeah. it, uh, the wording, it doesn't... Tint. It, you'd make it think that it's going to yeah. be sheer. You think it's going to be like a tinted moisturizer, and it's not. It's a full coverage foundation. Yeah, and it feels good, and it wears nice throughout the yeah. day. It doesn't does get, like, cakey around your nose. Or yeah, it doesn't yeah. oxidize. Favorite physical sunscreens? We're talking about that. I just did that hour-long dissertation on sunscreen, <laughs> so uh, my, my favorite physical ones are going to be the Elta MD for sensitive skin mm -hmm. or anybody's skin. That's a very clean one, and I really like the Drunk Elephant Drunk ones. Elephant. The Drunk yeah. Elephant that, I, I, I did say they do smell like stale Fritos. Oh. Like kind of trip. It's funny because people say that the vitamin C smells like hot dog water. So I'm like, we have half Ew. a picnic. We have hot dog water, and I don't get that scent. I didn't daughter. get that scent. I don't either. But people, I'm like, who's smelling hot dog water? I guess maybe you boil them on the stove. I always thought people make them on the grill. I don't know. Oh, 
hot tub water. I don't know. I really yeah. like them, but I think a lot of people smell and they're like, oh, I don't want to put this on. No, get it on. Yeah, I'll, I'll put um, it on. I like these. Drunk Elephant. Um, I like Josh Rose Brooks. I love Kate Somerville's, but that's chemical as well as physical, so that's not helpful, sorry. I have extremely sensitive and dry skin. When I exfoliate, it hurts because my skin is so sensitive. What should I do? Don't Stop doing it. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I'd say, number one, hopefully you're not physically exfoliating with like uh, scrubs. Yeah, when someone's like, oh, I'm using walnut. Apricot hearts. Yeah, yeah, on my, on my face and I don't know why it's tearing my skin up. It's like, that's exactly what it's doing. Uh, if you're using a chemical exfoliator, I'd say try lactic or something a little more gentle. Uh, but test patch along your jaw to see how your skin's gonna react. Not everyone's skin can handle it, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's not always for everybody, so. Just go easy. It's like that saying when they, the doctor says, oh, it hurts when I do this. The doctor says, don't well, do stop it. doing that. Don't do <laughs> it. Yeah, if, if it hurts, I think do it. the thing with skincare is uh, there's, a, there's certainly an element of advice that leads you to believe that in order for something to be working, you have to see a reaction on the skin. And that's just not true. I mean, Jordan's retinol is a case in point. Yeah. You know, you use it and your skin feels good and it looks nice the next day, but you, what you don't get is that it's working underneath mm -hmm. because you don't want that physical reaction. You don't yeah. want to have, you know, the sort of old fashioned red and dry and peeling. Who wants that? No. If so if your skin is sensitive and dry and you're exfoliating and it's hurting, your skin is telling you to please don't do that. Yeah. Literally. So I would do loads more TLC and then maybe in a couple of weeks time, you might be able to exfoliate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. But lactic acid's probably your best bet. Mm -hmm. Is there a product your mom used years ago that you would also use today? My mum used Longcom cleanser and I used that when I went to visit her a couple of weeks ago. Um, just because it was there and I like to use her things because it smells like her. Mm -hmm. um, she always wore Chanel number no. 5, that doesn't really count though. Um, but my mother's a complete Longcom, or Longcomb, as you say in the US, obsessive. Yeah. So the Nutrix hand cream and the Nutrix face cream, they make this cream called Nutrix, which is like grease. They're called monkey grease. Yeah. For like people who work on cars and stuff, it's like that. But the smell reminds me of her. So yeah, I would use it. My skin would break out, but it's <laughs> fine. I would still enjoy using it. Yeah, my, my mom. An L net. When I think of my mom, I think of what's that mascara that's the pink and green one from the drugstore? Maybelline, great. Maybelline, yep. She always had that. As good. Actually, it's probably in her makeup bag right now. So <laughs> I would use that. Although I, I, I don't ever really. But my mom, it's funny, my mom will use like lanolin based moisturizers and she swears by that. Her skincare routine is so simple. Um, I think she, she's aging really well because she moisturizes the crap out of her skin. I think mm -hmm. for aging skin, that's like number one. If you think about a shriveled up raisin. You want to add moisture to your skin so she does that and she just keeps it very simple she's not my mom does not use like all the serums and all the crap that i like to use my um, mom does yeah yeah some <laughs> some people can get away with that like my mom doesn't have to take like do all those steps and her skin looks great but even when i was younger her skin looked better than mine she's 30 years older than me that's rude yeah i know right well once i got the combo of the dna it's like nope my skin was like no that's not working for you <laughs> so yeah this person would like you to pick your favorite skincare in every category. Cleanser, serum, SPF, moisturizer. Oh god. Et you go first. Cleanser? Like Oh, we'll do it together. Cleanser. I I can I do the, the first we cleanser? We won't yeah, yeah, we won't talk about mine. I have a cleanser, yeah, it's so awesome. that's off the rec that's, that's off. We can't talk about that. That one has both in it too. That it does have both. Like that's good, but I would do for bombs. You got me addicted to that. Emma Hardy. I can't live without that. I've tried yeah. to switch and I just I can't. I Emma Hardy bomb. Yeah. Would be mine and for, without mine. For first cleanse, it's Jordan's, the the plie, the after show. Plie is awesome. Yeah, I love that cleanser. Um, and I like then Clinique, I, take the day off. Uh -huh. That's like three already. No, you got your home. <laughs> okay. Well, I have multiple cleansing steps, but yeah. the Tata Harper one I've been loving. I love okay. that purifying one. I was so Tata afraid. Harper is like 80s rock bands. There's not one I don't like. Yeah. I like the oil one too, and they fixed the pumps finally, because yeah. I did not like the first pumps I got. The new one, the clarifying, is almost is almost too strong, but they're all amazing. Yeah, I, I really that like That didn't answer your question, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, toner, P50. Yep, P50. 1970 formula. Mm -hmm. The strong one. I know, I feel like you're deprived, you can't get it. I know, I'm going to go get some tomorrow. You should just we, buy we a We can't buy it in the EU, so I'm going shopping tomorrow. What were the other ones? We, cleanser? Toner? Serum, moisturizer. 
that's too hard. Yeah. That's too hard. It depends. It depends. It what depends on what your skin is doing. Moisturizer, Kate Somerville deep tissue repair. Mine's the Belief True Cream Moisturizer. Oh, that's one. a wicked cream. I love that. I cream. love that cream. It saved my dress. We'd be better tonight. to do like the top five of <laughs> each. And serums, it depends. There's so many. So Vintner's Daughter. Mm -hmm. um, oh God, uh, Zelen Z Brightening for sort of pigmentation in the summer. Uh, yeah, there's there's one for every category. Mm -hmm. Jordan's Retinol. Yep, I love that one. Um, Even though the, I'll consider the Drunk Elephant Vitamin C, the, the C Firma. Yep. Some people treat that as a serum. And then like skin SkinCeuticals, Hyaluronic Acid. The, I think it's called like some kind of, it's not the Hyaluronic Acid, it's the, it's almost like an accelerator, but I know that's a Josh Roche book term, but that's a mm -hmm. brilliant serum too. So it depends on, there's not just one serum, unless you have like, perfect skin with zero complications and you just mm -hmm. want something to be as an antioxidant you could pick a vitamin c and say that's the best yeah. but once you get to my age you need like more <laughs> i won't say 27 but you need more yeah. what is your number one piece of advice for someone who wants to break into the industry work hard yeah for work hard show up mm -hmm. have a work ethic and be open to learn new things because yeah. we were talking about this too Technology and information is ever changing. So something 10 years ago that we thought was good could now come out to be like, nope, this is terrible. So you have to be open to hear hear new evidence, read a lot, like read trade time. magazines, All read medical time. journals, read Everything. what's going on because again, that information is ever changing. Ingredients are ever changing. Um, read things like New Beauty magazine. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like ones that are sort of, they're, they're out there but they have a bit more industry info in them subscribe to all the newsletters and it depends what part of the industry you want to be in do you want to be behind the scenes or do you want to be on the shop floor do you mm -hmm. want to work for a brand or do you want to work for a retailer mm -hmm. so it depends entirely what you want to do but for the same would go for all sort of places of work show up work hard don't complain mm -hmm. you know do your best and know your own strengths i think you really start to fly in any job when you know your own strengths and you also know what you're not good at so when i started my own business i hired an accountant before i'd even sent my first invoice because I'm good at making money and spending money, not so good at tracking it. <laughs> making money, spending money. You need to put that on a shirt. Yeah, like make sure it, it, spend it, yeah. track it. So yeah, know your strengths and know your weaknesses. If push came to shove and you could only choose one option, science skincare or natural organic skincare, which would you choose and why? Science. Well, science, but preferably science that leads to green and when I say green, I mean, uh, what I mean by that is I don't want it laid with, laden with 50 different things we can't things pronounce. that you can't pronounce. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, a science, like I would consider the brands I've been talking about recently on my blog and, you know, filming the video with the guys over here, they're science led, but they tend to use more natural ingredients. Yeah. So firstly, everything is a chemical. Mm -hmm. I can't. Water. I can't, Water is a chemical. Water is a yeah. chemical. Everything is a chemical. It's possible to be allergic to anything. Mm -hmm. Um, it's possible to have a sensitivity to anything. So what you're allergic to might be perfectly fine for yeah. me. I say like peanuts. I yeah. use that example all the time. Like it doesn't yeah. mean that peanuts are the worst thing ever. For some people they can be deadly. So avoid those. That's like what we're yeah. talking about with uh, essential oils. Yeah. Some people think they're like the worst thing on planet earth. So. And some people are fine. Yeah. So it, it, everything is relative. What are your thoughts on facial massagers like the Jade Rollers? I've enjoyed them, but a hand massage seems just as well, or am I missing something? I have a jade roller. I mean, it, it's cooling to my face, but I don't really believe in all of... I have a jade like, roller, I've never used it. Yeah, I, I've only done it when I actually had a tooth issue over oh, here really? and my face was swollen I was just like, rolling it because it stays Cause it nice and nice. cool. Because it stays yeah. cold. Yeah, but do I think... It's the same thing, like draining your, your glands. I think... No, they're not going to do anything. Use your hands. Yeah. And also, for me, it's just the inconvenience of having to go and get something to do it with. They're fine, and I know mm -hmm. people who love them. They're not going to do any harm. Yeah. You know, the main thing with skincare is do no further harm. Mm -hmm. So that's why if you and have a dry skin... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you have a really dry skin and it hurts to exfoliate, don't do that. Yeah. You know, if you have a spot that you're trying to pop and it hurts, don't do that. Mm -hmm. So for me, the Jade Roller is just... Uh, it's too much faff. Yeah. But if you love it, crack on. It's not yeah. doing you any harm. Yeah, I wouldn't say don't go out and buy like a three hundred dollar one or oh, some God, of those no. really expensive ones. But and also, you know, we were talking about this. Someone mentioned something about the eye. 
put two spoons in the freezer and take them out every morning and hold that mm -hmm. to your eye. Che yeah. Cheaper. Yeah, because I looked at those, um, I saw, I was watching a video that Lisa Eldridge did and she had these ones that look like little globes, the globes with the blue liquid in it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, those look so cool. And she was rolling around the eye. I was like, I want that. I signed online. They were like $200 each. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I was like, I'm not getting those. Spoons. 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 Yeah. <laughs> if you could spend money on only one skincare item, what would it be? It'd be an acid for me. Acid. I, I love acid. Acid. Mm-hmm. That makes the biggest immediate difference on the skin. We're acid queens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Best retinol or product with retinol to use on dry sensitive skin with redness? Yours. Mm-hmm. Why, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Housing it in an oil, it's genius. Yeah, putting it in oil. It, it yeah. Um, yeah, Jordan's is great. Um, Pestle and Mortar make a similar one for those of you in the UK who can't get Jordans without shipping it into the UK. Um, yeah, I, my thing with retinol, again, the thinking has changed over the last year. The work I did last year with Avon was really telling in that, you know, they, would, they did clinical studies to show that it's better to do a small amount every day rather than massive big peaks yeah. with prescription strength. And that kind of helped. I was going that way anyway instinctively, but that kind of helped to seal the deal in terms of you could use Jordans every night and you'd have no irritation. Yeah, yeah. and you'll see great results. And because you're dry, the oil will help. Yeah. Your top picks for life-changing skin products. For example, I took both your recommendations on Lotion P50 and the way my skin makeup looks has been improved 100%. Yes. Woohoo! Yes. yes. Yeah. I say, for me, I love a good acid. I love vitamin C, especially because I had so many sunspots for so long that really helped brighten my complexion. Um, it does help stimulate collagen, well, the LAA does. Um, I don't know about all the derivatives yet. Those have been confusing me, all the reports I'm reading about that. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, you can read too much. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, too. I'm like, yeah. okay, this is too much science. Okay, yeah, then, it's start, then some of them start yeah. conflicting. I'm like, wait, what do I believe? So they always um, conflict, don't yeah. they? Yeah, um, yeah. Um, P50, a brilliant cleansing balm will change your life. Oh, People who've never used a cleansing balm, who have only ever used wipes, it's orgasmic. They're just like, wow, my skin is amazing. Yeah, it feels and, so good. Even even washcloths. Oh, that makes a huge a flannel. difference. Yeah, flannel, washcloth. Wash I love those microfiber ones. Those I can't use that. No, 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 no wait. Wait. There's multiple. Did you ever try the ones I sent you? you did, yes, did you? and no, Jordan you did sent me some. Oh, yeah, and I his are those. okay, yeah, but, but I have no, no, no. I have to pick them up like this and throw them in the sink and put water on them before I can touch them because they're like cotton wool and it makes. Oh, I'm like, oh, yeah. there's a funny clip. We should link it below where um, Sophia Vergara, I think it is, is talking to Ellen on the show and they're talking about cotton wool mm -hmm. and that's when I knew Ellen because I already love her anyway Ellen and Oprah are my two women and Ellen talks about cotton wool and Jim my husband went oh my god it's you and she went oh please no ah uh, <laughs> and I was like oh it's me so Itchy. yeah a flannel um, a, a brilliant nighttime product yeah so something that you can put on and leave on your skin and see the benefits so a good retinoid mm -hmm. um, and then I think for those of you with a dry skin you're probably the only, I say demographic as if we're talking about nations, but I always use that terminology. If you've got a dry skin, a really good facial oil or a really good moisturizer will be the most life changing. Yeah, yeah, the Belief True Cream moisturizing balm really changed my dry skin, especially mm -hmm. when I was laying retinols underneath. That was like a lifesaver yeah. for me. This person would like you to go through each brand and name their hero product. Which brand? Just any brands, or are you going to shout some out for yeah. our entertainment? I'll shout some out. Oh my god, okay. okay. You shout them out then and we'll see how we go. Alright, May Lindstrom. Blue Cocoon. You love blue. I like the Problem Solver and the Honey Mud mixed as a mask. I also like Youth Dew. But Blue Cocoon's the first one that came yeah, to my head. Yeah, you love Blue Tansy, that's why. You have a Blue Tansy problem. Josh Rosebrook. Hydrating Accelerator. Hydrating Accelerator and Vital Balm Cream. I can't do without both. I haven't tried the Vital Balm Oh my god. Jordan Samuel Skin. The Pleary oh. Cleanser. Oh, the after I'm, show treatment now it's called. I'm, oh, I'm going to have to go retinol. Too. The retinol oil too, yeah. I'm going to have to go etoile. I'm picking two. I'm cheating. Drunk elephant. The sea firma. Oh, oh, hydration. The hydration. I love the, yeah, the, the blue. Yeah, the hydra. I, I the layer hydra. them though. The, the sea and then the And the, the, new, the new. Proteiny. The mo new oh, proteiny is amazing. The new, pro okay, so here's the thing. The new proteiny is very similar to deep tissue repair. Doesn't have the, quite the same, Jordan's like, oh, because we love that product. Doesn't have quite the same slip, but it's similar in what it does to your skin. Yeah, it makes it bouncy. I yeah. really like it. Very nice. And I love the packaging. I, I love like it. That's packaging. that airtight pump down. I feel like every moisturizer should be in that. I love no the tubs. packaging. Yeah. 
Paula's choice. Um, any of the BHAs? Yeah. Any of her any of her acids? Yeah. Her two percent BHA. Her retinol's a little too strong for me and I've got a leather face, but the the acids. She's got like fifteen of them, so you can pick one for every one. Yeah. Okay, time about. Deep tissue repair. DTR. Man, as I, we now call I it. loved that goat milk cleanser. Oh. My soul heard said it's gone right now. Okay, so deep tissue repair, goat milk cleanser, goat milk. Yeah, the, the moisturizer. Nourish. Her her moisturizers mm -hmm. as a group are phenomenal. I miss that cleanser. January Labs. The mist. Oh. The mist. Oh. See, January, I, also, I love the mist, but I also like the day cream. And I love the eye cream. Maybe her eye cream, actually. Zellens. Oh, I haven't tried anything from them. How? Oh, I'll fix that. <laughs> I'll fix I that. Yeah. Zellens. Oh, too many. Stem Complex is a wicked cream if you're a bit older, which obviously I'm not. Um, and his serums and his eye cream. But if, uh, if I had to just grab one. Oh, actually, no. Forget that. The Vitamin D. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, didn't oh, even talk about. I remember last me. year when you had a facial here, you did uh, the microdermabrasion and you were using that to soothe your skin out. Yeah, there. the vitamin D. Yeah. His vitamin D, if you have eczema, psoriasis, if, you, if your acid mantle is in any way compromised, that vitamin D is the dog's bollocks. Trademark, you need to. Trademark. Hashtag. Do hashtag, hashtag dog's bollocks. <laughs> yeah. Any more brands we want to cover? Emma Hardy is obvious. Emma Hardy. Cleanser. Yeah. We should have we should have bought out like a website and just gone through the brands yeah, and done it as a ticket tape. Forgetting somebody. Well, what about, why don't we do ones that are more accessible to people? So the big ones, like the big. Okay, yeah. Uh, so let's do like uh, Estee Lauder. Estee Lauder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clinique. Take the day off balm. One point zero. They're, they're, they do clarifying lotions, but the 1.0 is alcohol free and has a tiny, tiny bit of acid. So it's perfect for people who want to use an acid, but want to start somewhere really sort of affordable, but also gentle. Um, they do a lot of good products. I think Clinique is underrated. I know that sounds bad because they're one of the biggest brands in the world, mm -hmm. but they're unfragranced, they're affordable and you can get them everywhere. Yeah. How about checking sources and what to keep in mind when looking at studies? I thought, oh, I, what we were just, what you guys were just talking about, about how everyone has a different opinion on things, even doctors. I mean, obviously there's some basic training there that's uniform with everybody, but how they interpret people's skin and, and products and the reactions are all going to vary. So, um, I say figure out what works for you and follow what they say. Mm -hmm. And who you trust, it yeah. depends on who you trust. If you have a really good derm, then that's great. If you trust the advice that people give online, like one of us, that's great. Um, as far as sort of journals, I think it depends on how deeply into the science you want to go. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I subscribe to a few trade magazines that you can get if you're in the industry that are quite jargon heavy, but it's porn for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that stuff. Sometimes the medical journals, though, if you start reading, you can go down like a yeah, right, dark oh, hole like, oh. and freak yourself out. Yeah, so. exactly. And, and sometimes it's super complex stuff, too. A yeah. lot of the, the journals you'll read. Um, but yeah. So it depends. It depends on how deep you want to go. Yeah. This is a bit redundant, but there's a follow-up. Uh, the number one ingredient that has made a positive impact on your skin other than SPF, sun avoidance, and the number one ingredient you would avoid? Acid. Yeah. Made the most difference. Yeah, lactic acid for me. The first time someone used P50 on me in Paris, just before I did some training over there, I trained with Biology Recherche, this is like a long time ago. The first time they used acid on my skin, first of all, I got the really strong tingle because it had never had it before, and I was like, what is this? but my skin was immediately like silk. Um, and the number one ingredient I avoid, uh, I'm not sure I really actively avoid anything. I'm more likely to avoid a whole formula that doesn't read well. Yeah. I'm more likely to avoid something that has like the second ingredient is silicone. I don't mind silicone, but something that heavy, there's no point yeah. because everything else everything behind is, yeah. it is not really gonna penetrate. So um, I'm more, more likely to actively avoid a whole formula, a formula as a whole, rather than singular ingredients. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with parabens, I don't have a problem with essential oils, but there are some 
it, formula is king, and I can't say that enough. Formula yeah. is king. So some essential oils um, are too much if I'm using a retinol, for example. So mm -hmm. it's kind of just knowing what works best for you. Yeah. I don't me, actively really avoid anything. Yeah, for me, it'd just be alcohol super high up in an ingredient. Yeah, like if it's high. a second ingredient or something in a moisturizer, mm, no. Yeah, in a moisturizer, no. In an acid, I can understand yeah. it because as soon as you put it on the cotton and you wave it about, yeah, it's, you're, you're, it's, it's going to evaporate. It's, yeah. If you ever think about if you've ever had like isopropyl alcohol and you've left that open, how quickly that evaporates. That's mm. why a lot of products use it for their dry down intact. But if it's really high up and you have dry skin and you're using a moisturizer and it's literally a drying alcohol too, not fatty alcohols, mm. as the second ingredient, probably yeah, not gonna avoid. do well, yeah. Maybe we should finish with a couple more so we can, mm. well, we don't even know how long we've done and we need to split this in two. Yeah. Biggest pet peeves in the beauty and. <laughs> 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 all right thanks for tuning in guys uh thanks for tuning in i am gonna i think part one is gonna be on steph's yeah. channel so if you've joined us from steph's channel and you've never seen me before i'm really sorry you're missing out no i'm really you sorry if i out. offended you in any way i'm sure i did <laughs> no. just um, if she hasn't give it time she'll get to you <laughs> take a number get in line <laughs> um we will definitely film again when we're next together. Yeah. And thank you for your questions. All of those questions came from you. And we will see you soon. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.